It's over, Megatron. Surrender. Prime, the only thing I have left to surrender is my heart. Uh, hey, uh, I didn't see you there. Um, so Redwood JS just released something called service caching. Uh, let's check it out. There's a famous saying you may have heard as a developer that there are only two hard problems in computer science, caching and naming things. But after this, there'll only be one hard problem. Service caching lets you significantly speed up certain service calls by just saving the result into a cache like memcache or Redis. So rather than some calls taking 100, 500, 1,000 milliseconds to return, they'll return in one or two because now it's just coming out of a cache almost instantaneously. So this is our default sort of blog app where we have some blog posts as the homepage and then you can view the details of a single blog. And then we also have an admin here. And you can see we have three posts now, one, two, three. Let's speed this one up first, just a single post. Right now it's fast, but we'll simulate it becoming slower over time. So the first thing we need to do here is install service caching. So we have a set command and you just pick your client. Now in my case, I'm gonna use memcached. And you'll see here that created a new file for us, uh, API source lib cache. And it's import some stuff from Redwood, sets up our logger. See here, it switches between the in-memory client or memcache client, depending on if you're testing or not. We provided a bunch of testing utilities for the cache as well. And then finally exports a couple functions that we're gonna use. So the first thing we're gonna do here in our service is we're gonna import the cache function. And let's speed up this individual blog post first. Now, if I cached it right now, you wouldn't notice much of a difference because this is already returning almost instantaneously in development. But what we'll do here is we'll simulate a delay. So we'll add a little promise here. And we'll add our delay in here. Now there'll be a three second wait before our post is actually returned to kind of simulate a slow response from a server. And you'll see if we check the site again, that now this loading message will sit here for three seconds before we see our post. So let's speed that up. So we've already imported our cache function. Now we'll just surround this with it and we have to give it a cache key and it should be unique to the sort of data that you're returning. So in this case, it's gonna be post and I'm gonna use the ID of the post. And then a function that returns the data you actually wanna cache, in this case, the post. Now I'll need to do async here. And now let's see if we go back to the site. The first time we go, there'll be still be a three second delay but now that data will be cached. So now when I hit it again, it's instantaneous. And we have another helper here, cache find many. And this will let us sort of automatically generate a unique key for a find many query like this, so that if any of the records change in this result set, it'll bust the cache and return the latest. So it's gonna look like this, cache find many. You still need a cache key, but in this case, the internal code to this cache find many is gonna worry about doing something unique like the ID, and it's gonna use the updated at timestamp. And now we don't need to call find many on that, we just do this. And in this case, I won't have a delay, so you won't really be able to tell the speed, but we can still look and see. If we look in the logs here, you can see cache hit. And you can see here this key generated. So in this case, the second post happened to be the latest one that was updated. If I was to go into the admin now, and let's say I update the third one. Now this is now the latest updated key. So it should bust the cache and create a new key. So the first time I come back here, we'll see in our logs that there was a miss. So it wanted to cache it by the new third record that was just updated, there was a miss, and then it cached it, and now it's a hit. And that's it. We have plenty of documentation on this. If you go to the reference docs, reference services, and then check out the new caching section, you find all about it. And we also have ton, those tons of test helpers, so if you come in here testing, you switch over to the testing doc, and you'll see we have a just matcher to have cached, finding full records that have been cached, partial things that have been cached. It's pretty amazing. So yeah, service caching, check it out.